I've been given the task and the, the honor of speaking to you this morning about recognition and the value and the importance of recognition. I'll just say this to you. I can remember, I remember when I first got, it, got started in this industry, I went to an event and after I, I mean, I was brand new. I was a week old. I was a baby. I was 30 years old and I left the event and I remember this was long before the internet, long before cell phones. This was when we had calling cards, when you would actually take a card and go to a payphone. Some of you don't even know what a payphone is. But we would go to a payphone and you would put in those 18 numbers or it seemed like 400 numbers. And when you got to number eight, somebody had stuck gum in number eight. And you had to go to a different payphone and that one was cut off and you're panicky. How am I going to get to a payphone that works? But I remember I left this event and they gave me 10 cassette tapes. There was no MP3s. There were cassettes. Some of you remember eight track tapes. Thank you very much. But there, they gave me these 10 50 minute cassette tapes. And I know what they did. They did what you do with people every day. You give someone information and you think, well, maybe in three months or six months or, or nine months after you listen to each one of these tapes, maybe you'll have some interest. And that night, I listened to 10 50-minute tapes. The sun was coming up and I was finishing the last tape. Seven of those 10 tapes were recognition tapes. Seven of those 10 tapes were stories of people and the things they went through in their life. And it was stories from them on stage talking about, about the, the struggle, the obstacles and the struggle, the obstacles and the victory. And it was, it was this, this emotional moment for me sitting in my living room in Tampa, Florida, 30 years of age, wondering if this would work for me, listening to these 10 cassette tapes. I remember that night I gave my first speech. It would be like giving a platinum speech. I can remember walking around our coffee table saying, we are so honored to be platinums in this bit. I remember that. Have you given your speech yet? Have you said the words yet? Have you spoken the words yet? Recognition, recognition. I gave my speech that night. I remember, I remember when I was the equivalent of a silver presidential in a particular organization. So the equivalent of a silver presidential, and I was sitting in a meeting room just like this. And a guy who was the equivalent of a national director came up to me and said to me, boy, I wish I had you in my group. And I said, well, thank you. I appreciate that. It would be an honor to be in your group. And I said that he was with one of his new guys, this guy who had on a badge that, 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 that said, basically said, this is my first event. So I've got the equivalent of a national director with the new guy talking to me who at the time was the equivalent of a silver presidential. He said, man, I wish you were in my group. And I said, boy, it would be an honor to be in your group. And then I heard, ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. We're going we're gonna to begin our recognition. Then I immediately sat down to listen and see and applaud and be a part of recognition. And I remember that gentleman that was the equivalent of a national director turned to leave and his new guy said to him, where are you going? And he said, quote, ah, it's only recognition. And I remember it as he walked away, taking this new person away from this moment. I remember thinking, thank goodness I'm not in your group. Thank goodness I'm not a part of that. Thank goodness I'm not a part of somebody that wants to hold their seminars in the hallways. Thank goodness I'm a part of, of, listen, people work, they have garage sales. They work overtime. They get spare jobs, extra jobs to come to an event like this. And unfortunately, sometimes somebody in their upline who doesn't get it, who doesn't understand the value and the importance of recognition puts them in a position where they may travel thousands of miles to come to this moment and miss it by 20 feet because they're out in the hallways. Recognition is critical. It's the story. It's not just the training because when you listen to the stories, when you see the people walk on stage, you're watching a story unfold right before your eyes because what you see on stage are the living words of Albert Schweitzer, example is not the main thing in influencing others, it's the only thing. It's the example. People don't care what you say, they care what you do. People don't follow what you say, they follow what you do. 
Moliere said all men are alike in their dreams and all men are alike in the promises they make. What makes them different is what they do. And what you see on stage during a moment like this, during recognition, is, 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 is that those words coming to life. Diane Ackerman said, quote, I don't want to get to the end of my life and find that I lived just the length of it. I want to have lived the width of it as well. You know, you're going to watch people on stage, and I'm going to tell you there's common traits among all these people. You know, because there's a tendency to sit in an audience and feel alone. There's a tendency to feel like an ID number. I felt that. I've been in an audience of 60,000 people in the back, and you feel like an ID number. You feel like, you feel like you're, you're, you're a number in queue calling customer service. And sometimes it feels lonely, and you feel like, am I like those people on stage? Can I be those people on stage? And you'll go through a lot of fears and a lot of doubt and a lot of questionings and what you don't understand. And I hope before this is over, you do. There's not a person on stage that hasn't had that same feeling. There's not one person that hasn't had that. But forget what makes us different. Because there's plenty of things that makes us different. I'm OCD. I guess that's one reason I gravitated towards doing this, because it's so repetitious. Build a list, contact, invite, share the message, follow up. Build a list, contact, invite, share the message, follow up. Hey, let's do it again. Build a list, contact, invite, share the message, follow up. We have a lot of things that make us different, but when you watch the achievers, the people on stage, look for the commonalities, look for the, the common traits of achievers. Artists such as Leonardo da Vinci and Raphael or Rembrandt, there's common traits among great achievers. Political leaders such as Constantine the Great, Gandhi, or George Washington, military leaders, Julius Caesar, Alexander the Great, or Genghis Khan, explorers such as Marco Polo, Magellan, or Columbus, writers, scientists, inventors, philosophers, religious leaders, many differences in their life, different cultures. We're here today from different cultures. I remember one time I was in Argentina and a lady stood up and she said, you're not from around here, through her translator. You don't know us. And I remember sitting there saying, when you go to bed at night, what do you dream about? A better life for your family? Hope for the future? To be remembered well? To do good in your life? And she said, well, of course I dream those things. I said, then it doesn't matter the language we speak or necessarily the culture we live in or the country we live in because we all dream the same dreams in different accents and different languages. So when you see people being recognized, they all come from different places, but they have common things that make them similar. Let me give you four. Four things that, that you will find in all great achievers. Four things you will find in the people that are being recognized today. Number one, they all have focus. Focus. Specific intent. Everything you do, you must do with specific intent. Have you ever gone to talk to somebody and they say, you know, I would do this, but... I'm a 100% guy. I can't do this because I can't give it 100%. Y'all ever met someone like that? It's all, oh yeah, I would, I would do it and I'd probably be really good at it, but I'm a 100% person and I, I just, I don't have the time to do this. Let me tell you something. I always politely look at those people and ask them if they have children and if they have a job. And if they have children and they have a job, then they're, they're, they're not keeping true to what they just said. The reality is this, it's not doing this 100% of the time, it's giving it 100% in the time you do it. So if you can give it 100% in the time you do it. But they all have focus. Everything they do, they do with specific intent. There's a purpose that comes along at a certain point, there's this purpose that matches where they're sitting in the seat and they say, that's enough. This is going to be mine, I'm going to do this. And it's at that moment they separate themselves from everyone else and they realize that they've always been a lion. They recognize for the first time, I have been a lion my whole life. And the lion does not lose focus based on the opinion of a sheep. A lion stays focused through everything. They know that they have to keep going. Great achievers, everyone being recognized this weekend. They have this one characteristic, it's focused. 
You know, I've had people that'll say to me, well, how do you maintain balance in your life? I don't know how to maintain balance in my life. I've never maintained balance in my life. Sometimes I wake up and I think, oh, I'm so balanced. And five minutes later, I'm so out of whack. <laughs> you ever had that happen? You're like, this is great. Everything's perfect. And five minutes later, where did the perfection go? I, I, don't, I don't know what it's like to have balance in your life. I don't know that, but I do know this. I do know that I've never missed one of my daughter's events, ever, ever, in 25 years of building teams. I've never missed an event. I, 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 I am of the opinion, I'm of the opinion that if there, if there is an opportunity meeting and your granddaughter's the flower in the school play, you get a camera, you get a ticket, you sit in the front row and you watch the flower blossom. I'm also of the opinion if your favorite football team is on television, record it and get to the event. You know, there may not be another moment to watch a flower blossom, but I promise you, your favorite football team will always be on again. And you can record it. It's all about priorities. It's all about the important things in your life. Number one, they're all focused. Focused. Sometimes you're going to feel obsessed with this. Sometimes you'll have people around you say, you know, you're a little obsessed with this. And sometimes that's okay. What's wrong with being obsessed with things you're passionate about? What's wrong with being obsessed with the things in your life that give you joy? What's wrong with being obsessed with accomplishment? What's wrong with being obsessed with doing well in your life by doing good for other people? What's wrong with, 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 with waking up in the morning thinking, today I'm going to make a difference in my life and I'm going to reach out and find other people that want to move forward in theirs? There's nothing wrong with it. It's focus. Number one, they're all focused. Number two, they're always prepared. They're always prepared. Ferdinand Magellan decided early on he wanted to sail the seas. He studied geography, navigation, astronomy. And he was like most achievers in life. When knowledge wasn't in front of him, he traveled to knowledge. People came from all over the world this weekend to be at Manifest, to travel to knowledge, to travel to inspiration, to travel to information. They readied themselves, readying oneself for the moment is inherent in all great achievers. Benjamin Disraeli wrote, the secret of success in life is for a man to be ready for his time when it comes. You must be prepared. You must practice. Malcolm Gladwell in his book, The Outliers, The Story of Success, talks about 10,000 hour rule. And he says you're not an expert in anything until you've done it 10,000 times. In basketball, it's 10,000 free throws, 10,000 hours. Playing the piano, 10,000 hours. It's the practice, it's the repetition. The beauty of the achievers, the beauty of the people that have walked the stage is this. They recognize when they started, they didn't have to have 10,000 hours because in what we do and how we build teams, what you must do is, 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 is find someone that's got 10,000 hours. Find a leader with 10,000 hours and, and maneuver your way on their shoulders. Stand on the shoulders of people with 10,000 hours. You'll earn money all along the way and throughout the process, throughout the process, you'll gain your 10,000 hours of experience. Only in this, only in what we do, can you stand on someone's shoulders and earn a living and create a lifestyle while you're developing expertise. Number, number two, they're always, always prepared. Number three, a common trait amongst all the achievers you'll see on this stage is perseverance. My dear friend Andy Andrews says, persist without exception. Keep moving. Keep moving. It's lonely. It stinks sometimes. You feel so insignificant. This common trait of perseverance is the one that drives me the craziest. I hate perseverance. Napoleon said the greatest attribute of a soldier is not loyalty, it's not courage, it's endurance. It's the ability to keep moving when others quit if you own a traditional business. It's amazing how all your employers are with you until about 4.59 in the afternoon. And then the, 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 they punch out, they're gone, they're, they leave, and you are there alone feeling insignificant, feeling alone. In our country, in the United States, at a critical time in the founding of our country, George Washington, you talk about feeling insignificant and alone. Perseverance is born and is, starts breathing when you feel most alone and most insignificant. And he walked in front of his troops that were freezing and they hadn't eaten and they hadn't been paid. 
And they weren't fighting as Americans, they were fighting as the Virginians and Hampshiremen and Marylanders. And George Washington, this gentleman that felt very insignificant, who had not won many battles at all, ultimately would, 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 would be considered the father of our country. But up until that point, he's losing and he's feeling insignificant and he walked in front of his troops and he said, let only Americans stand watch this night. And those words from a gentleman that felt insignificant and alone, that was trying to find a way to keep moving, those words gave breath to the Declaration of Independence of the United States of America. 1963 in this country, one of the greatest speeches in our country's history was given by Martin Luther King Jr. standing at the steps of the Lincoln Memorial who quoted from the Declaration of Independence when years earlier when somebody felt alone, when you're driving in a car by yourself wondering if this will work for you and you feel alone, give your speech. Talk about what it's like to be a platinum presidential. I was so honored to come in in the helicopter. Talk it, speak it. It's one of the three powers if you embrace and you start talking about it the right way, it's going to give breath to your own business. Perseverance. Edison worked week after week without a full night's sleep. He'd take catnaps under his desk. Michelangelo painted without rest in excruciating pain. He slept up on the scaffolding. They said that when he would come off, it had been so long, he would take his socks off and his skin would literally fall apart and come off with his socks. John Milton continued writing poetry after he was completely blind. Beethoven wrote some of his greatest works when he was totally deaf. Perseverance. He would cut off the, the legs of the piano, place it on the floor. They couldn't hear the music, so he would feel the music. There's times when you do this, and sometimes, whether you like it or not, you'll feel numb to some of it. You keep doing it. It's perseverance. It's perseverance. Number one is focus. Number two is always be prepared. Number three is perseverance. And number four, all great achievers, everyone that you'll see on this stage, every single body, every single heartbeat, every single soul that walks across this stage, they know there is a greater purpose. They know there's something bigger that moves them. Abraham Lincoln stated that he felt like he was a vehicle for God's work. When Handel composed the Messiah, he said that he disappeared and the work was completed by a power far greater than himself. It's not always spiritual, folks. There are great achievers, some great achievers have great faith and others have no faith, but they know there's something greater than themselves. Sometimes it was to serve humanity. The, re the reality is this, everyone that walks on the stage believes differently. Some are common, but some believe differently, but they believe in something greater than themselves. And they did things because they felt compelled to do them. March 23rd, 1775, Patrick Henry said, the next gale that sweeps from the north will bring to our ears the clash of resounding arms. Our brethren are already in the field. Why stand we here idle? What is it that gentlemen wish? What would they have if life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God, I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. It's something bigger. It's something more compelling. It's more than focus now. It's more than perseverance now. It's more than preparation now. It's something inside of a man or a woman sitting in a room like this that compels them to want to be more, to do more, to give more, and to be a part of something significant in their life in 1962, September, John F. Kennedy, we choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do other things, not because they're easy, but because they're hard, because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills, because that challenge is one that we are willing to accept people that sit in this audience and eventually walk on stage, people that stand in front of you and we applaud them and they smile and they laugh. They made a decision one time when they recognized they were a lion and they would never lose focus over the opinion of a sheep. They recognized at that moment that I'm gonna do this not because it's easy. I'm gonna do this because I must. I'm gonna do this because it is hard. I'm gonna do it because it's worth it. In June 18, 1940, Winston Churchill said, Hitler 
knows that he will have to break us in this island or lose the war. If we can stand up to him, all Europe may be free and the life of the world may move forward into broad, sunlit uplands. But if we fail, then the whole world, including the United States, including all that we have known and cared for, will sink into the abyss of a new dark age, made more sinister and perhaps more protracted by the lights of perverted science. Let us therefore brace ourselves to our duties and so bear ourselves that if the British Empire and its commonwealth last for a thousand years, men will say this, this was our finest hour. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you something. You know, the thing is, when you sit in the audience, when you sit alone sometimes, and there's people all around you and you feel lonely, you traveled, you, you spent your hard-earned money to come here. You know, you worked hard, you decided at one point along the way, I'll be there. I, I'm sick and tired of hearing these people tell me I have to go. Enough already, I'll go. Some of you came just to let, get people to stop telling you to go. You fought all the way here. Don't think I don't know how this feels. You fought, you argued in the car for 15 hours. You know, we can't afford to come. I know we can't afford to come, but they said we had to go. Do you do everything they tell you to do? If you did everything they tell you to do, we'd be further along than we are right now. You fought, you argued, you walked in, you went to registration, you walked into registration, and they looked at you, they go, how are you? And you go, we're awesome. It's like, all the, where was this person in the car that was arguing all the way? We're awesome, we're great. And then you get to your room and you start fighting again. We ought to tell them how we really feel. You ought to go tell them that we're doing everything they're telling us to do and it's not working for us. You tell them if you want to tell them. I'm not going to tell them that. They're going on stage as a new presidential. They're doing something you're not doing. If you would do what they're doing, we'd have what they have. You ever lived like that? You listen to the CDs and you hear these stories and you sit there and you go, why not me? I want you to know something. You're no different than they are when you recognize you're a lion. You know, I, I stand up here so many times and I tell you, I love you, I love you, I love you. And some of you that don't know me, you don't fully comprehend what I'm trying to tell you. Listen to me, for you to leave your family for you to go out at night and sit down with a stranger and say, what are your dreams? What are your hopes? What are your ambitions? How do you not love someone like that? How do you not feel, how do you not feel this overwhelming sense of, of, of care and concern and compassion and love for someone with a dream? Someone that, that, that is so, they lay in bed at night and they think one day it's going to be me. One day it's going to be me. And then one day it is. One day it is. I, uh, I had a guy that used to be in a business of mine, and I remember walking into his house one day, and he had a poster. And on that poster was a note from his daughter. And the daughter wrote on the, the poster, she goes, Dad, one day you'll stand on a stage, and the rest of the world will know how great you are. I love you, Dad. You're great. I want you to know something, folks. One day, one day, you're going to stand on a stage and the rest of the world will know something you know. The rest of the world will know something you already know. You're great. Edwin Chapin said, not armies and not nations have advanced the race, but now and then throughout the ages, one individual has stood up and cast their shadow over the rest of the world. You know, I watch these people on stage. I'll leave you with this thought. I watch these people on stage and I think about these people and how many times what you don't see is how many times they question themselves. Oh, they walk across looking good now. Million Dollar Club looking good. I can look good too. They walk across this stage and you're sitting there and I want you to know this. They sat there too. They sat right where you sit. They thought exactly what you thought. They came to a point they wanted to, did you ever feel like you wanted to stand up 
in a meeting like this and say, because I have felt this my whole life, I'm here. I found you. I've looked for you. You ever felt like that? Did you want people to know you were there? Whatever seat you're in, you wanted to stand up and say, guys, I knew you would be here. I knew you existed. I didn't know where to find you. But I've always had dreams. I've always felt differently than my friends. I would stand in a group of people and feel alone because I wanted to talk about the future. I wanted to talk about being free. This business will make your dreams come true. I'm telling you right now, what you have to do is decide today, today, that you, my friends, are a lion. You are a lion. It doesn't matter what a sheep says to you, the opinions are meaningless because when you walk out here knowing, knowing in your soul that your moment's coming and you must prepare, you must persevere, you must be ready because we need you. This is your moment. Don't let go. Stay focused and know this business will make your dreams come true. God bless you. Thank you. I got the eye of the 